Welcome to Getting to Know ACS with Tracy and Jasmine. So today, again, we don't have a guest today, but that is because we are going to be talking about ACS in general. Okay, so some programs we've already interviewed, some programs are coming up, but we just wanted to give you all a quick overview of exactly what ACS is about. So our mission at ACS is to deliver um, prevention, uh, responsive intervention, life skills, and transition services for our service members, um, their families, and our civilian um, employees here at Fort Bliss or wherever you're located. And we want to help improve their resilience and their readiness for life in general. So like I said, Jasmine, we've already talked to some of the programs at ACS, but if you can give us a rundown, just the name of the all the programs that ACS offers. Uh, all right, so that's what, financial readiness, uh, Army Emergency Relief, which is AER Family Advocacy Program, Exceptional Family Member Program, Relocation Program, Information and Referral, Employment Readiness. There's so many. There are a lot. Uh, mobilization and Deployment, Army Family Action Plan, Army Family Team Building, Army Volunteer Corp, uh, Soldier Family Assistance Center, and then Survivor Outreach. So as you can see, there are a lot of programs that ACS offers. Now, here at Fort Bliss, our ACS is broken down into three locations. Right. So we have what we call Main ACS. That building is located at 2494 Ricker Road. Mm -hmm. um, so at Main ACS, some of the pro well, the programs that we offer at Main ACS are um, Army Emergency Relief, or AER, yes. uh, Financial Readiness, mm -hmm. or FRP, Family Advocacy Program, FAP, which is FAP, um, Employment Readiness Program, which yes. is ERP, mm -hmm. and then we have our relocation and our, our INR. Did I get everybody? And the Exceptional Family Member Program. Oh, how did EFMP I? EFMP <laughs> always gets left out. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they do. How did I forget them? <laughs> so those are some of the, those are the programs that we offer at Building 2494. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for anything that has to do with them, then you're going to call um, 915-569-4ACS. Is it 569? 569. <laughs> Yeah, it's 569. I told y'all I never know the number. <laughs> so that's 915-569-4ACS or 4227. Yeah. But it's easy to remember for ACS. So some of those programs that I mentioned, like the relocation assistance. Mm -hmm. So I know that's the one that's near and dear to you um, because of the lending closet. Yeah. <laughs> and we focused a lot on the lending closet. Mm -hmm. But um, some other things that the relocation program or INR program slash INR program, information and referral, what they do are welcome packets. Yes. So you want, do you, can you explain a little bit? Uh, so I know that they provide services. Um, I've seen that they offer like things to do in El Paso, right? right? Because me, like personally, some people are just like, there's nothing to do. No, if you look in there, like there's, you know, outdoor stuff, there's, um, other businesses that they like they hey go do this with your family uh they provide the lending closet information they provide general information about acs programs as well like if you need help so right and then information mm -hmm. not only about acs programs but mwr which is morale morale welfare and recreation yes it also gives information about them as well mm -hmm. um in information in general about the programs that are available not only on post but some programs that are off post yeah and so those are the local relocation uh packets mm -hmm. or information packets but then we also will do uh packets for people who are going to different duty stations yes. as well mm -hmm. so they can kind of find out what to expect when they get to that um, other duty station because who yeah. knows their ACS may not be as good as ours <laughs> <laughs> well that and if you're going overseas um, I know one of the program managers that I was talking to she said that she would she could link them up with a, a sponsor over there so they don't just get to Italy and they're just like all right what do I do I what have I no car I don't know where I'm going like it's another country so that that was pretty cool okay so they can also help with getting sponsorship mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's a good thing and then the other um, programs that are over at Maine ACS are employment readiness 
And that's the one we had uh, Miss Denise where yes. she spoke about um, helping with resumes, yeah. helping with um, civilian resumes and federal resumes. And mm -hmm. she kind of went into the difference in that. But another thing that we want to highlight on that program as well is that they do hiring fairs. Yes. Um, they do the hi they do a teen hiring fair once a year, and that's usually right before the summer um, kicks in. So the teens can have an opportunity to get summer jobs. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to make sure people understand with the teen hiring fair when that occurs is that it's not just um, agencies on post. You know, some people are like, oh, well, you know, for whatever reason, my kid's not going to work on post or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they also have agencies that are outside of post um, that are in the El Paso community that come to those hiring fairs. Mm -hmm. You know, during COVID, the hiring fairs are being held virtually. So, you know, that's one thing to keep in mind. But then they also have two other hiring fairs that they offer throughout the year. Yeah. So. That's another good thing about um, employment readiness. And then the interviewing. The mock interviews, right? Because as a teenager, I mean, do you really know how to properly answer why should you we hire you? Because I need money. That's it's, like, it's like a teenager, yeah, right. I need the money. It's yeah. like because I'm just, I'm just good. You right, know, I'm like a, I'm an Insta star, so hire like me. That answer can just like kill the interview. So it can either be like. It'll kill it in a good way, or it can just be like, nah, we're not going to. It's like, mm. well, either way, it's probably going to be bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to be all bad. Mm -hmm. So and then, of course, another program that's at um, Maine ACS's Family Advocacy Program. Yes. So I'll let you, you know, because I'm always talking about family advocacy, and people probably think I'm the only one, but you worked <laughs> in family advocacy. I did. So they have the classes like couples communication, transparenting, uh, which is actually back up, so definitely look into that if you need to and then anger management stress management which are two two of my favorites for sure um screen free marriage screen free parenting which most of us need like me <laughs> <laughs> uh what else they do like unit trainings for dv child abuse um and then during the month of april the uh month of the military child mm -hmm. so we do programs that are focused on that um child abuse awareness right, right um but you mentioned one that i know we didn't mention before because at the time we were not uh teaching it because of COVID. it was transparenting right right and so with transparenting one thing that um i want people to understand about transparenting you know life happens so if you're going through if you're in a situation where you're going through a divorce mm -hmm. in the state of texas and there are other states that require this. I know, like, uh, Washington State requires it for sure. And there's some other states, but I can't think of them right off the top of my head. But if you're going through a divorce and you have children, you are required, the court will require you to take a co-parenting class. Yeah. And that's what that transparenting class is. It's a co-parenting class, and it will um, fulfill your obligation for co-parenting. Yes, um, and because off post it does cost a couple hundred dollars, so yes. definitely take advantage of that. And that class is usually um, offered at least once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever your divorce is going through, whenever you have your co court hearing, as soon as you know that you're going to get a divorce, I would recommend to go ahead and get that class taken and get it out the way. Yes. Because what I've found happens is that people will um, get their court date and they're like, I haven't taken the class yet, and it, we've already given it for that month. Yeah. And it's like, well, you're going to have to wait. Right. But sometimes, you know, we can kind of work with you if it's an emergency. I think they'll work with you on yes, that. Yes, yes. Uh, and then what else? I think, are yeah. those the programs? Did I cover all the programs at Maine ACS? No. <laughs> we have uh, <laughs> EFMP. I'm off my game today. I keep forgetting EFMP. <laughs> I Sorry, know. Andre. Sorry, Andre. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the Exceptional Family Member Program, which is the support side of ACS. That's a big one. We are not uh, EFMP medical. So we are the, we got the support groups. We got the system navigators, which are the non-clinical. Um, right. Yes, case manager, sorry. And then... Because they'll go in, that's when you have those issues with um, IEP, which is your individual education 
plan plan mm -hmm. IEP yeah so they'll if you feel like the school's not living up to or not fulfilling that the mm -hmm. system navigators they act like a liaison between you and the school right right so, especially because sometimes those conversations right like they can get out of hand I was gonna say sometimes you need yeah. somebody to be in between because you right. know you start talking about people's kids and then yeah. they want to come across the table on you <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so let the system navigator do that yes and then of course I think you mentioned AER and FRP so financial readiness and Army right and relief yeah and of course you know all these programs that we mentioned um, they have uh, their representatives have been on the podcast already so if you want to know more information about those programs you can go back and listen to some of those episodes because yes. they've already been on yes yes um, so yeah and then um, the other location was that all of them then did we get all I was of them? trying to think again yeah, that is all of them uh, oh, new parent support, which is still part of oh yes, yes, which is part of family advocacy. Mm -hmm. But our new parent support, they're to support those parents, you know, that have children from birth all the way up to uh, three, three years old, mm -hmm. and they will also support that uh, pregnant, pregnant. Uh, person. I, I believe Jessica said. Uh, starting after like the first trimester or within like you know right, right they can so. start seeing them mm -hmm. so yeah and, and then, then the, even before you decide to get pregnant if you need to try it out like try, we'll have give a baby you, right? we'll give you a test baby <laughs> yeah I love that I okay know. so those are all located at uh, main ACS mm -hmm. as we say but that's located at building 24 94 Ricker Road here at Fort Bliss yeah then we have our other building, which is our Family Assistance um, Family Resilience Center (FRC). I should know that I worked over here for five <laughs> years, so I'm drawing a blank. But they're located at 250 Club Road, and their number is 915-569-5500. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, and I don't know if it actually looks like the Alamo, but I always tell people that building looks like the Alamo. Whenever yeah. I'm trying to give somebody directions, I'm like, you go here, you go there, and then it's a building that looks like the Alamo. Mm -hmm. Does it look like the Alamo? Um, I don't know, but... <laughs> See, no one knows, but we use that as a yeah. point of reference. But it's a very nice building. Like, it is... It's so zen. Yes. That's where that resilience yes. comes in. Like, I've been thinking about taking some plants from there, but I won't. I won't take it. <laughs> so, hey, if y'all missing some plants, <laughs> check Jasmine's house. So, at the... <laughs> At the Family Resilience Center, we have our Army Volunteer Corps, and that's uh, Corps, and that's where Miss Tiffany came in mm -hmm. and spoke with us and talked about reading to cats. Yes, which I have not done yet. Yes, so. but you know, there's also volunteer opportunities uh, mm -hmm. that you can go through. You know, the USO uh, volunteer opportunities, maybe at the thrift center or whatever. But if yeah. you're wanting to volunteer at a location here on Fort Bliss then check with the volunteer corps and they can give you information about who's accepting volunteers. Right, right. So. And again, um, Tiffany would be great because those that are not necessarily working during the summer because they don't have that much time to give, they can definitely volunteer, right, for as far as the teenagers go. Oh, definitely, mm -hmm. yes. Get that experience in. And, mm -hmm. and, and you know, as, as a teenager, especially if you're still in high school, um, to get those volunteer hours, what people don't realize a lot of times with that is volunteer time on a college application yeah. looks really good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just like uh, a resume. You right. know, that ex again, we'll go back with the teenagers. You know, I'm a teenager, so of course I don't have a lot to put on here as far as job experience. Yeah. But you can use that time that you put on, uh, put in volunteering mm -hmm. to put on your resume as a teenager to help build that resume up. And exactly. it's like, even though I wasn't working, I was volunteering because I wasn't old enough to work. Right. And introducing them to new, like, stuff, like, because um, as a teenager, you don't know what you want to do exactly. for the rest of your life. So why don't you go try it? And if you don't like it, at least you didn't waste four years at college, right? Okay. Like, <laughs> and that's true, though, yeah, if yeah. you think about it. And, then, you know, because, like, some people are like, oh, you know, I really love working with people, mm -hmm. but you've never worked with anybody. And then you go volunteer someone and you f somewhere and you find out, you know what, I don't really like people. Yeah, you see all the different personalities <laughs> and you're just like, actually, no, I'm good. Or maybe. you might think you want marketing and social media and you're just like, maybe it's too technical. Or I don't care for all this time that requires right. marketing. So. And, you know... And that's a good thing. I, li I like that, you know, to go volunteer somewhere where you do that marketing mm -hmm. because 
I think especially with the younger generation, a lot of people think, oh, I can become an Instagram star or whatever, a YouTube, you know, YouTube mm-hmm. famous. And they don't really realize how much, much work, work it yeah. is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and it's like sometimes where that's their aspiration yeah. to be that. And they think, oh, I'm just going to post these videos and I'm going to have a thousand, you know, a hundred thousand views mm-hmm. and you get two. <laughs> it's your mom lot. and your dad. <laughs> Job. <laughs> you know, we feel like that sometimes. <laughs> it's like, I like your video. Right, yeah. Like, Thanks. <laughs> and of course, we're biased because we think that everything our kids do are great. Sometimes. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's the benefit of the volunteer corps that, again, is located over there at the Family Resilience Center. And then mobilization and deployment. Um, and Again, all these, they've come to speak with us. They may not have been aired yet, but they're going to be aired. So mobilization and deployment, that is really geared, even though it's with the families, um, a lot of it has to do with our soldiers when they're getting ready to get deployed. Yes, yes. You know, or when they're coming back. Mm -hmm. And for the families, how do we react to that deployment? Right. How do we react to them coming home? Yes. Because, you know, when someone's deployed Mm -hmm. we get used to doing our own thing Mm -hmm. you know they're gone and they're gone for nine months and we're used to doing our own thing how do we reintegrate that person back into our lives right get a different house (laughs) (laughs) just kidding (laughs) sometimes that's what you have to do but you know so we we talk about that you know Mm -hmm. mobilization and deployment can come out and discuss that because there is a transition between when your soldier leaves and they're gone for nine months and when they come back, you know, a lot can happen in nine months. Right, right. Um, say, for instance, uh, your soldier leaves and you're already, you're pregnant. You know, you may be a couple months pregnant mm-hmm. and your soldier has missed the whole pregnancy. Right. And then they come back and they're used to not having anybody but you in the house. And now they have this infant yeah. or this baby. Yeah, and they're not going to warm up that bottle the way that you do it. So that's going to be a whole nother. That's argument, a whole nother right? conversation. Like, why do you have to do it that way? It's, not even it's like, that's not it. how you do it. <laughs> and that's what happens, though. Yeah. You know, during those mm-hmm. deployment cycles. Um, not only that, it's like, okay, well, why do you pay the bills that way? Yeah. I, you're supposed to do this and this. Mm-hmm. It's like, but did the bills get paid? Yes, they did. Okay, so don't worry about how I was doing them. And then another important <laughs> one for this one, uh, mobilization and deployment, is making sure that the spouse who is staying behind has all the information and resources that they need. I have had so many Boom. calls where they're just like, I need to go to the hospital and I have no one to watch my children. And it's just like, wait, like, no, that is the worst situation to be in because now you're gonna have to leave your child with somebody who you don't know instead of like already establishing that so getting established with everything that you can possibly need is essential for this program drop those gems yeah okay every time i'm just like what how did oh my god how does that happen and then that kind of freaks me out because i'm like what do we do like i'm gonna find somebody but you're not gonna just be comfortable leaving exactly and you know and there used to be and i don't know if people still say it but um during deployment whatever's going to go wrong will will go, go wrong, wrong. Yeah, murphy's exactly. law you yeah. know and, and it's not being negative or anything but or you know an emergency happens if you're by yourself in a new like uh what's it called duty station duty, right? yeah. and mm-hmm. you get in a car accident like who do they call you can't call your spouse who's over there overseas exactly right? like, that just takes too long or a family emergency comes up how exactly. and i don't have i don't know where all your paperwork is at right so how do I find that? So this, these are important things mm-hmm. that are talked about to help the family get through that deployment. Yes. Because one thing we don't want to happen is that our soldiers are deployed and they're having to worry about the family at home. Because if I'm worried about my family, you know, then I can't really focus on my mission. Mm-hmm. So we want to make sure that the family is ready so that our soldiers are ready. Exactly. You know, and again, it's all about planning and the mobilization and deployment is going to help our families get yes. through that. Yes. So that's all a part of the FRG training, mm-hmm. SFRG, Soldier Family Readiness Group training. Yes. That's all a part of that training. And like I said, the pre-deployment training that they offer mm-hmm. and the post-deployment training that they offer. So when the soldier's coming back, like I said, how can I reintegrate 
the soldier back into the family? You know, how yes. can I get used to them being back here? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like if mommy is the one who's the soldier and she's been gone, you know, it's heartbreaking for your child not to want to come to you and yeah. they want to go to the other parent. Mm -hmm. Because look, I gave birth, you need to be with me. Right, right. <laughs> and then your child's like, uh, who are where you? have you been? I'm no, like, who are you? I'm not gonna just give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so. and, and we talk, you know, during those uh, pre and post deployment, they talk about that, right. how, how to get the, um, how to reintegrate mm -hmm. um, with your family. And then also over at the FRC, we have our Army Family Team Building. Yes. And uh, that's when we had Tammy come in and speak to us. But that's just learning about Army life or military oh, life yes. in general. Mm -hmm. You know, um, how to read that LES, uh, how to dress for a formal, um, you know, learning the acronyms that right, right. mobilization throws out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yep. Learning that chain of command, right? Like knowing that maybe you shouldn't call the certain people first. Like, <laughs> yes, like, okay, you know what? They you know, like, I don't know who I spoke to. <laughs> <laughs> don't jump the chain. Yeah. You know, it's like a little incident. Mm -hmm. Now you're calling your your spouse's first sergeant or sergeant major. And it's like, oh, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so AFTB, you know, that's another program that is located at the Family Resilience Center. And also um, the uh, AFAP, Army Family Action Plan, Hey, I got it right this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, Army Family Action Plan, whereas if, you know, you see something that you feel like needs to change, put in that suggestion and say why you feel like it needs to change, what yeah. needs to go on, you know, what, how can we make Army life or military life, just military life in general, how can we make it better? Right. Okay. Yep. So those, um, those are the programs that are over in the, fa at the Family Resilience Center. And then, oh. One other program, we have our Soldier Family Assistance Center, which is uh, geared towards our warriors, our wounded warriors and their families. Yeah. And they do outreach, basically everything that ACS does, but is kind of scaled down mm -hmm. um, for that particular demographic. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that those families, while those soldiers are here recovering, that those families are also taken care of and that they're taken care of. Yeah. And it's sometimes it's done on a lo lower scale because you know we may not be they may not be comfortable being in large crowds and that type of thing so we want to do it on a smaller scale right, right. and they're also located over at the frc okay. as well so that's our second location and then our third location is for a very specific demographic and that's our survivor outreach services which is sos mm -hmm. um and they're located at building 241 on sheraton road and their number is 915-568-5970. So um, the Survivor Outreach Program is for those families that have lost their soldiers, right? Yep. And they will do uh, different events for them mm -hmm. um, that are specific for them. And it's kind of like for the support yep. to have that like-minded community. Mm -hmm. It's like someone else who can understand what you've gone through right from right. losing a soldier and i know they will uh put on like the wounded warrior run for the fallen mm -hmm. um and then they also do the uh they do a tree i'm still learning the programs over here right because uh, they're different at each base actually right so yeah they do a um like a tree where they put like the ornament on the tree okay the christmas time I, i'll get the name of that but I, I did forget that one so and then they also do where they will we have here at fort bliss we have a wall that has the name of mm -hmm. the soldiers and they will do a ceremony where they will add names to the wall so if you ever come to fort bliss or if you're here right when you come in cassidy gate there is that wall of our fallen soldiers that has their name it's kind of like a waterfall i think it's water that flows in there oh. but like I said they're for a very specific demographic mm -hmm. the SOS is but they're there to help those families who have lost their soldier you know help them with their financial needs um, uh, give them that support that they need when they're going through that transition and make yeah. sure all their paperwork is in order mm -hmm. or if they're not getting the services that they felt that they needed yeah uh, they're there for that so you know we just wanted to come on here today just to give you that broad view of all our programs 
that we offer. Mm -hmm. And just to know that, you know, again, if there's one of the programs that we spoke about, if you're interested in it, you know, go back and check out the other podcasts, yes. you know, because they're there. Um, we've spoken to all the programs. So we're going to start doing um, a little more uh, involvement. So if you're watching this and you want to make some comments or you have a subject that you'd like us to um, cover, put it down there. As you say, Jasmine, in the what's comment your comment section? I was going to say, what's, what's, what's your line, <laughs> Jasmine, in the comment section? Yeah. So put it in the comment section and, and we'll be more than happy to mm -hmm. um, talk about that. Or if you are interested in maybe being a guest because of a program that ACS, how a to come on and talk about how ACS helped you. Yes. We'd yes. be more than happy to have you on here mm -hmm. so you can talk about your experience with ACS yes. um, to let everyone know how ACS may have helped you and made a difference. Yes. And I, I want to clarify that because I feel like people that probably watch this think, think that, like, oh, they're super, like, that's going to be really hard because I'm not going to be comfortable, but oh. it is relaxed. Like, we. <laughs> we it's just like too much. I know. right it's just like a having a conversation so as long yeah. as you don't you know don't look too much into it it's just yeah you, you know. won't even notice right so we'll guide you through yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> look we'll make you comfortable before mm -hmm. before the cameras start rolling before they yeah. start recording us we'll make sure that you're comfortable or whatever yeah. and you know like i said it's it's just we want to make sure that people are understanding that what we do we're here for the families um yeah. you know we're here to support them um, we're here to let them know what ACS has to offer right. and also what um, MWR has to offer to right. our family members, you know, through that relocation um, mm -hmm. and information and referral. Because mm -hmm. you can be at a duty station and think that, oh, there's nothing here for me. And then when you leave and find out there was so much that was offered that you didn't take advantage of. So frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> personal experience yeah. <laughs> and just learn the recycling trails so. yeah you know and then you know just to be able to if you're sitting at home and you know bored or whatever mm -hmm. come take some classes yeah you yeah. know the they're valuable classes they're life skill classes and you can learn so much from them and they can make such a difference in your experience yes. in being a military family yeah. or just being a DOD civilian so we just want, like I said, we just wanted to come on here and touch base with you guys, um, put it out there, let you know that we're available. Um, if you have questions, again, just put it down in the comments. If you'd mm -hmm. like to come on and speak and tell us about your experience, put it down in the comments and we'll get back with you or send us a message on Messenger. Yeah. Okay. Um, because we are on our Facebook page, so... Hopefully that's where you're watching us at or we're on YouTube somewhere. Yes, yes. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Facebook will start, you know, trying to post like what we're going to do so that way we can get a load of questions. And then right. um, when the person comes on, we can be like, hey, we got 20 questions for you. Let's do like a lightning round or we'll make it fun. You know yeah, we'll I mean? make so. it fun. Mm -hmm. And maybe you'll win something because we like to give stuff away. <sighs> Love that. Yes. It's fun, fun, fun. <laughs> so with that being said, I think, have we covered everything I that we wanted to cover today? Yes. All righty. So with that being said, this is Tracy and Jasmine. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Bye. Bye.